thanks very much for coming. Oh, my pleasure. This is uh, kind of an exciting time for you because they just announced, I guess, the Women's World Cup in 99 is going to be here in New York. Is that right? Yeah. First game, opening ceremonies all over the United States. Now, is this something where uh, you, it's 99 is still a ways off, but you start training for it now? Oh, yeah. Very competitive. In fact, George and I were just in the back slamming down a few. <laughs> that's how you. That's how what, you. What happened to George? He's my role model. He I, is. Is he I really? Love him. Yes. Well, I've heard this about you. You like, you know, you're a great athlete, but yeah. you like to have a beer every I now like and then. The uh, finer things in life. Live beer. large. Yeah. And this. <laughs> and and you like uh, you're a donut fiend. Is that is that and correct? This is like uh, I'm in Dunkin Dev Dunkin Donut Heaven here in New York. It's like crazy. Everywhere you walk, it's like sensory overload. Donut shop, donut shop. You know, in California, everyone's like health freaks. Right. You have your bagel shop, your juice clubs. Right. But you like a donut. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and you've even stopped the, uh, I've heard that when you guys are out on, on, you know, touring around playing, you stop the bus when you see a donut <laughs> shop. Is that right? I have. That's true. So it's a sickness with you. <laughs> it is. It's a disease. Have you ever thought, I mean, because in soccer you have an advantage, your hands are free. You could have a donut and a beer <laughs> out there while you're playing. I was thinking I could double fist it. That would yeah. be my ideal game. Now, I'm curious uh, about, about soccer because I have to admit I don't know that much about it. It's never been a sport that I, I followed that much. Is there, in, in women's soccer, is there trash talking? Do you, get, do you trash talk out there? Uh, actually, you know, it's different because you can't really understand the language barriers is a big factor. So there's not a lot of trash talking. Uh, you know, maybe sometimes they turn around, you pull their pants down, give them a good wedgie or something. But there's a, there, there's not, you know, there, there's That's not sort of the internet. The wedgie is an international yeah, sign yeah. that passes, <laughs> passes yeah. all barriers. Yeah, that's that's one that, that's common with the team. That's our favorite one, probably. Right. This is a good image for women's soccer. <laughs> I wait. like to drink beer, eat a lot of donuts, <laughs> give the occasional wedgie. <laughs> You'll be on the Wheaties box in no time. No, she said good wedgie, as, oh. if, as if there's a bad wedgie. Yeah. Well, if you don't get maximum thrust, yeah. it's there's, really not a wedgie. There's a technique to that, definitely. You're telling me. <laughs> That's my whole summer camp experience, was one long wedgie. I was left to hang on telephone poles for months at a time. Please, let me down. Uh, are your parents uh, supportive? Are they supportive of your soccer playing career? My parents are very supportive, but absolutely clueless, which is fantastic. I mean, my mom still is the ongoing joke today. She doesn't know what position I play, and, uh, you know. They, she, she doesn't know much about the game? It's clueless. It's, yeah. it's great. Uh, but she did, she's a nurse. One time she was watching me uh, play. We were playing in Jacksonville, mm -hmm. Florida. It was a TV game. It was like eight degrees, and we never play in the cold. I'm a California kid, so if it gets below like 70 degrees, you know, I've got all the layers on. And it was eight degrees in Jacksonville. We didn't have any long sleeves. We had nothing. So at halftime, I said to the trainer, you have got to give me something for my hands. I think, I think they're going to fall off. Mm -hmm. You don't really need your hands in soccer, but you need right. them to run, obviously. So she gave me these latex gloves, like surgical gloves. Right. And, uh, and, and your, mo your mom was watching this game? Yeah, my mom was watching this game. And afterwards, she said to me, she goes, Jules, did, did you have, like, surgical gloves on in that game? And I said, yeah, Mom. And I said, I was going to give a rectal exam after the game. And she went, you were what? You know, she, she didn't know you were kidding? Yeah, she was just like, She huh? thought this is, this is part of the sport now? Yeah. Nurse Judy, right there. Fruity Judy, I call her. Uh, are they, the young fans, uh, because, because soccer is something that, you know, I see young kids everywhere playing soccer. They love it. Yeah. Are they the ones that are the most rabid when they come to a soccer game? Oh, yeah. The, and that's been the thing. Ever since we won the, the gold medal in Atlanta, it's like, it's almost like a frenzy. You know, these, these fans, these kids, they're, they're fantastic. You know, before they were passionate about the game, but now it's like they come to these games and, you know, literally after a game, they'll want to take your shoes, they'll want to take your shin guards. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know this happens a lot with basketball athletes, but, I mean, you could literally throw out these smelly, ripe socks into the, you know, into the stands and they'll be like, yes! <laughs> You know? How much do they take? I mean, how much clothes and stuff do they take? You leave the stadium naked, basically. Maybe, may, maybe that's more what they're. You know, it's, yeah, that's no, why they want the clothes. It's possible they're not even really soccer fans. They're just like, just give us your clothes. Uh, are you? Are you? Uh, are you super? You know, speaking of uh, of clothes. Some players, if they play well in a certain jersey or something, they like to wear that jersey again and again and again. Are you superstitious that way? Everyone always says that with athletes, that you have all these superstitions. And I, I kind of, I was as when I was in high school, back in the days when I was a youngster. 
uh, I wore, in fact, I had these, uh, this pair of underwear that had these little soccer balls on it. It was so cheesy with these little teddy bears. And, uh, it I was, have those, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I saw them on that video, too. Yeah, uh, all right. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and, they, and I had to wear them every game. Well, we ended up... So you, every time, every, every game, because you wanted to win, you kept wearing yeah. the same pair of underwear. And how many, how many uh, games in a row are we talking 84. here? 84. Yeah. Okay. They were weathered. Yeah, yes, okay. So I said, no more 84 to the suspicions. In a row. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm getting the suspicions out of here. So, no, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> uh, but uh, I got to mention this. The U.S. women's soccer team is playing exhibition games all over the United States. And this is exciting. The sport is really growing yeah. fast. And, and this is, this is going to be a huge event. They're, they're touting it as the biggest women's sporting event in history in 1999. So it's going to be in the Rose Bowl has the final in Los Angeles. Right. New York, the Giant Stadium has uh, the opening. Foxborough, you're from Boston, aren't you? That's right. Foxborough got a site. So yeah. uh, it's all over the place. It's going to be great. All right. Well, best of luck with that. Thank you Come very back much. and tell us uh, how it all develops. Julie Foudy, everybody. <laughs> Terry Jones is coming up. We'll take a break. We'll be right back.